Now, if you've been around the Japanese media sphere of anime, manga, visual novels, and what have you, you may have noticed a phrase often regurgitated by both the media itself or by fans of the media, and that is, don't confuse reality with fiction. This is a phrase that fundamentally makes sense at its core. It's pretty much the Wii version of, it's just a game, bro, and embodies an important point. You shouldn't obsess over a fictional reality, story, or characters, because at the end of the day, it's just not real. Of course, this sentiment is important to keep in mind, no matter the form of media. But in complete truth, I hate this phrase. Not because I think my waifu is real and I want to get married to her, but because people use this phrase to completely disregard any argument against the portrayal of controversial topics. For example, incest in visual novels. There is a lot. Every third or fourth moage you will play will probably have some sort of Emoto sister character, or at the very least a cousin. Not always blood related, but it's not so rare that they will be. Now I'm not exactly criticizing their use of incest, and in fact I am quite the degenerate myself. But whilst even modern western media forums use incest to various degrees, it doesn't sexualize it to the extent Japanese ones can. Visual novels have age scenes. Visual novels have a lot of age scenes. There are visual novels made solely for the topic of incest, and at the very least we should question it. This is bullshit Bruce, I thought you were on our side. The side of freedom of expression, the freedom to express lollies, to express incest, to express our favorite waifus. Look guys, I read these things too, but when we say it like that it really sounds like we're on the wrong side of history here. The problem isn't the usage of incest in Japanese literature, the problem is the marginalized sexualization of it, and subsequently the effect this has on its perception. I've read a lot of visual novels. I remember being horrified when I read Koharu's route in Senren Manga, a route that involves the protagonist's cousin. My most popular review on Steam is a recount of her flamboyant moans leaking out of my headphones and into the ears of my unsuspecting roommates, who then looked at me how Jeff Bezos looks at poor people from his private jet, with pure and utter disgust. Yet, these days I'm just chomping on chips like it's another Tuesday whilst the Moto Chan gets railed by her Oni-san. Being desensitized to extreme topics is nothing new with the era of modern media, but letting it loose unabated can have lasting side effects, especially to individuals who have trouble confusing fiction with reality. But I, and probably you as well, are rational individuals who probably won't do that, right? <laughs> Ironically enough, however, whilst these Emoto routes will often have happy endings of some sort, the story does sometimes put into question the morality of it. Which is good, and what I meant earlier. Because at the end of the day, we're all rational people with morals who shouldn't just take everything we read at point blank. Visual novels like Saku Saku and 99 Episode 2 might portray incest, but it's not in a positive light. That's not to say they don't have age scenes in them. I mean, we still got a quota to make here, guys. We have fans of the story, and then we have fans who need the story as a little bit of a break. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. But they show the hesitation of the characters and the ostracization of them from their friends and family for breaking out taboo. And this is ironic because many people miss the point. Time and time again do I see various posts where the original poster is in bewilderment at why incest is illegal and so looked down upon. They come to us, fellow visual novel readers who may have read the story and enjoyed its content. They rally for our support, compliment our wonderful taste, and then they cry. Not tears of joy for being understood, but tears of sadness when the community as a whole envelops him with the phrase that he hates the most. Don't confuse reality with fiction. We visual novel readers experience some fucked up shit, but most of us are grounded in reality. Whenever I saw these posts, I say the same thing. Think whatever you want, man. Just don't fucking tell anybody about it. But I realize now that that indifference might be dangerous. But let's take a break to tell you what isn't dangerous. Hi, my name is Shameless Advertiser Man, and I'm here to tell you about the VNTure Podcast, a podcast hosted by two lovely dudes that you should definitely check out. You can listen to it in the car, you can listen to it by the pond, you can even listen to it while you're getting it on. 
I'll be on it next week too, so uh, check it out. But uh, don't leave yet, I need your watch time. The entire point of that subject deviation from our main topic is that you can take a topic that is taboo, that people know is taboo, make media of it that portrays the ostracization of its characters for committing the taboo, and people can still come out of it with some sort of positive perception of said taboo. And if it has sexual connotations, which in the case of incest, it does, for many people, that's a plus. And whilst post-nut clarity might bring 99% of the people down to reality, there's always gonna be some exceptions. People will continue to confuse reality with fiction for many reasons, and it's not just overly passionate fans of Emoto visual novels. You've got people with different mental disorders and genetics that understand and perceive things differently than we do, which then see those meme Steam reviews about how much they love the lolly and incest content as something people are seriously saying when they are in fact saying it in jest or of course sarcasm but they simply can't differentiate that. But even many people who are defined as normal will still completely engross themselves in fiction to an unhealthy degree. Escapism is a very real thing, and we are living through what is known as a loneliness epidemic. People are socially isolated now more than ever, and unfortunately, people will run away from their problems through modern media. People have done this for ages, and will always continue to do so. However, right now we live in an unprecedented time where almost all media is very accessible to anyone with internet. It's very easy to lose yourself in this media, whether it be anime or visual novels, but it's not hard to distinguish between reality and fiction when you're just the person looking at a visual avatar on a screen, or most of us anyway, barring a few exceptions. But you also have to question how long that will last. I truly have to wonder how those in the future will deal with people abandoning the real world for the virtual one. It is already the case that men are marrying anime characters and various virtual waifus, and I can't see that problem deteriorating when you can choose to make your reality virtual and being able to place yourself in a fictional reality. This technology is only getting better. In the future, you'll probably be able to put sensors all over your body for accurate sensory information, and maybe you'll be able to go to Walmart and buy the officially licensed Oculus Sensatory Fleshlight. Who knows? But what I do know is that as our reality continues to blend into the virtual world through AR, improving VR technology, and who knows what else, I believe that the phrase don't blend reality with fiction will simply become obsolete because we are inherently trying to make technology to do just that. How long will it be until people come home from work, insert themselves into some sort of VR apparatus, and then say, honey, I'm home? Maybe not soon, but probably a lot sooner than you would think. The main point though I want you to take away here is that using don't confuse reality with fiction as an argument against the portrayal against sus content is not completely adequate. People are imperfect. They may lack the capability to understand the difference between reality and fiction, or they may have the capability and pretend they don't. And at a certain point, when reality becomes virtual, and you can make your virtual reality fiction, where do we draw the line? This video became a lot deeper than I actually expected it to be, but in short, I made this video because somebody don't confuse reality with fiction to me on Twitter when I was trying to make a point, and it pissed me off, so I decided to make a video about it. A incoherent video probably, but a video nonetheless. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks. Bye.